Hey booktube, it's Greg from Coffee Slash Books. I just wanted to film a quick video today to give you all an update. Um, I've been MIA because I ended up getting really sick. Um, I went to the hospital and it turns out I had bronchitis. Um, so it was about a full week where I was completely incapacitated. I couldn't read. Um, I could barely like sit up or do anything. So I'm glad that's over. Everything's better now. Um, but that's where I've been. Um, also, I'm wearing my Blanche Devereaux shirt, so that's a win. Um, so yeah, like I said, I haven't really read anything. I'm just trying to s get back into it. Um, I'm currently reading the Best American Essays from 2017, which I talked about probably a couple times before about how much I love essays and how I got this in a haul when I was in the States. Um, the editor for this version for this year is Leslie Jameson, who I don't really know anything about her. Um, but, or him, I guess, because Leslie could be a boy's name, but, no, okay, she's a woman, <laughs> sorry. Um, I was really impressed by her, so if anyone doesn't know what The Best American Essays is, it's published once a year, 2017, and it's a collection of essays that an editor picks and writes introduction to, and all the essays, they have specific requirements, like they have to be published in reputable journals or be picked up by publishing houses. It can't just be someone who writes an essay and submits it. This is a collection of essays that were already published during the year on all different topics. Um, and the reason why uh, I really like these is because my first year in university, I think I've still told this story before, um, my honors writing course was literally just it was the best American essays of the century. And it was focused about reading these essays and writing and exploring them. So that kind of like launched my interest actually more into literature and more into writing. So I will say that her introduction was unlike any of the other ones I've ever read. She was very blunt. Um, her writing style is amazing. I'm going to read an excerpt in a second because that's how much I loved it. Um, this year was a bit um, eventful in the world and especially in the United States and she hits that in her introduction very directly um, about the election and the results and everything since then, which I was kind of surprised about because I thought maybe a lot of editors stray away from that, especially in like a collection of essays. Um, so I really liked it. And the first essay I read was Emily Maloney's Cost of Living. It was published in the Virginia Quarterly Review. And what it's about, it's about a woman who tried to kill herself, and she ended up, I don't know, I can't remember exactly how she ended up at the hospital, but she ended up not dying, and was struck with a huge hospital bill from her recovery after trying to kill herself, and this debt followed her for decades. Um, for many people who don't know about the American healthcare system, that's really expensive, and it can make or break your life. One accident or one Illness could bankrupt you. It could basically, yeah, it could ruin your life. I've personally made decisions about not going to a doctor and not having something taken care of due to its cost. So that kind of, and I have insurance. There were times in my life where I didn't have insurance and it was terrible. Um, so for anyone who's not familiar with that, it is a real thing and it's a very serious issue. So it's about how she, she works as an ER tech in a hospital and she deals with how to bill things and all the different kind of patients that come in that need help and either can't get it or she kind of has to fudge things a little bit. So it's a really grim insider's perspective about a hospital worker viewing how medical debt affects everyone in her town. Um, while she has the debt still on her shoulder, she gets calls every day, like 10 or 20 times a day. Um, and eventually the debt, I guess, gets erased because she spoke to someone on the phone and they basically like told her, oh, uh, you don't have to pay it anymore because it's been X number of years. Have a nice day. And yeah, so I thought it was a really interesting story. Um, it definitely explores a serious issue in the States. Um, I think that's the only essay I've read so far. Um, like I said, I've been MIA in terms of reading. But I just want to read something that Leslie Jameson uh, talks about in her introduction about how the role that essays kind of are in terms of politics. The essay is political and politically useful, by which I mean humanizing and provocative. Because of its commitment to nuance, its explorations of contingency, its spirit of unrest, its glee at overturned assumptions, 
because of the double helix of awe and distrust, faith and doubt, that structures its DNA. Essays are political, not just when they take up the kinds of content we call political with a capital P, social injustice, civic life, and the, the rule of law and government, but because they are committed to instability. They are full of self-interrogation, suspicious and received narratives, and hospital to contradiction. They thrill toward complexity. Essays bear witness, and they confess the subjectivity of their witnessing. They need some motivating urgency, like... Wonder, trauma, mystery, and justice. The essay insists that every consciousness yields infinite complexity upon close scrutiny. This is something close to the precise ethical opposite of xenophobia or scapegoating. Essays take abstractions and make them particular. So I thought that was a really uh, good way to describe essays in the current political world. Um, and it goes on, it's a couple pages long. I highly recommend reading it if you're interested in essays. Um, her, how she frames essays changed my perspective a little bit before reading essays after it, um, so it's definitely influential. Other than that, I'm not sure what else I'm going to be reading. I'm dealing with my move and packing and all that stuff. Previously, I made that video about the unhaul, and there were, ended up being so many books that I cut it in half again, because I'm like, oh, I just don't feel like packing and carrying and dealing with all these things during the move. So... I'll have to take out my Kindle and download a few books during my travels um, because I don't, I want to travel lightly. Normally I don't really like reading on an e-reader, but sometimes duty calls and you have to just deal with it. On a happy note, I know where I'm going to be. On June 12th, I'm flying to London for two days, for three days, and I'm excited for that. And then I'll fly to Philadelphia, and then in two or three weeks after that, I'll be making my transition to Washington DC metro area. For right now, for right now I will be in Arlington, Virginia, which is exciting. Some people don't like it. I'm excited. I haven't lived in America in over 4 years, so I'm definitely excited for it. Um, I just have to do like logistical planning and get a place to live and figure out my life in that regard. So it'll be a very exciting and interesting summer. Um I wish I could vlog during it. I'll try. I still know how to edit videos. That's also on my to-do list, so we'll see about that. But other than that, I also want to thank you if you've subscribed, because I have 52 subscribers, which is 52 more than I thought I would ever have. So thank you for that. Um, and hopefully I'll be posting more frequently. I have a question about recommendations. If anyone can recommend a collection of essays, whether it's by one author or multiple authors, that are more provocative or more like raw um, or intuitive about human nature, not so much maybe about political, uh, pol politics, history, or social constructs, constructs. I'm very interested right now in reading more like, I don't know what the word for it is, revolutionary or abstract maybe essays, so I would definitely appreciate any re recommendations you may have. Other than that, I hope you are having a good day wherever you are. Thanks for watching, and see you later. Bye.